Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's episode of the Tech Talk with me, Kazim. Uh, my guest on today's episode of the Tech Talk is Chris Lloyd Jones. And uh, Chris today is going to be walking us through green software engineering all the way. Hi, Chris, and welcome to the Tech Talk show. Hey, Kazim. Uh, great, to, great to speak with you, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me. So uh, let's begin with letting my audience know a little bit about you, uh, Chris, what you do and uh, things like that. Yeah. Sure. So my name is Chris Lloyd-Jones and I am based out of London here in the UK. I lead Avenard's open source project office and I've been at Avenard for about six years. I'm really involved in the Green Software Foundation and joining some other organizations within the Linux Foundation. Um, and I'm also on the side part of Open UK and the Microsoft MVP. I love open source and I love green software. So, so let's start now. What is green software engineering? And can you also please give us an example of a software that developers can use to code green softwares? Sure, so green software engineering is like the application of climate science to software. In the same way that we measure CPU and GPU usage of our applications, it's now about how do we measure the amount of carbon that our software emits. Something that you could use would be the cloud carbon footprint calculator that can measure the amount of carbon in your cloud. There's many other tools available as well. A green software engineer is the engineer of the future. I'm wondering, Chris, is there any difference between a regular developer and a developer that codes green softwares? So I would say there are differences, but those differences come through training and practice and background. So a green software developer is a software engineer that knows the impact that they can have on the world around them. A lot of people don't realize just how much carbon software emits. And once you know, you can improve. So yeah, green software engineers have a small difference, but everyone can become one. So, so you just mentioned carbon, right? Uh, at this point, everyone would agree that the amount of carbon that we have in the atmosphere these days is just, uh, you know, we need to find a way to put it under control. So, so what, what do you think that organizations and professionals uh, can do to help reduce or combat this challenge of, uh, you know, climate change that we're having today? I think business leaders need to understand that everyone in their organization is able to make a difference. I think the start is by raising awareness of the challenge within your organization. So communicating the business benefits of being more environmentally friendly. One, software that is more efficient is usually cheaper to run. So if your software is good for the environment, it will also be cheaper for you. And two, training your software engineers on these practices within your organization. At the end of the day, people won't know what they need to do if you don't help them. And I think finally, knowing just how much of a difference this can make. Moving one organization software into a cloud is the equivalent of taking 26,000 vehicles off the road. It's a big change. Let's talk electricity for a bit, uh, Chris. You know, we as computer people need to make use of computers and computers depend on electricity to run. So, so what advice do you want to share with us now with regards to how we use electricity or how we can, how we can best consume electricity now? I would say that I recognize that software will always use electricity, um, or at least I imagine in my lifetime, unless we invent something brand new. Um, but it's all about being, first of all, more efficient. How do we make our software more energy efficient and use more efficient hardware? And when you've exhausted those limits, it's about making sure that the energy you are using is clean. Different parts of the world have different access to clean energy from renewables like solar and wind and air. But at different times of the day, you can pick a clean fuel mix. So if I replay that back, it means make your software energy efficient use energy efficient hardware and finally make your software runs at times of the day when the energy might be cleaner and there are tools that the green software foundation provides to help you to do that earlier on you know i was trying to check with you what the difference is between a regular developer now and a developer that codes green softwares 
so so let's get into a little bit more details now uh if you have someone looking or interested in becoming a green software developer uh you know so so what are the skills that this person would require you know to do well in this field so i would say that because this is a new field a green software developer of the future needs to be curious and willing to learn unlike many areas of technology the information isn't already out there we're still learning every single day for example one of the tools we're working at at the green software foundation can take your infrastructure as code templates and from that figure out how much carbon they're likely to use but right now we don't know how energy efficient are some of the cpus or memory or graphics cards these computers have we're having to work things out so yeah the first skill is a willingness to learn and to do the hard work i think the second skill would be a willingness to share like so many of us as we learn we have to make others aware because ultimately we all live on this one planet it's up to all of us to share what we can to reduce the impact of the software and the world around us and i think the final piece if i've got communication if i've got willingness to share i guess being detail oriented and willing to change your mind um there can be a lot of disagreements around what the best way forward is because sometimes making software more energy efficient might mean removing or limiting features or functionality so we have to be willing to listen and to change our mind i don't want us to close out chris without talking about resources now especially for newbies right so so what resources do you want to leave us with with uh, now on how people can learn more about green software engineering okay so you can start by going to greensoftware.foundation and that will give you a good overview of many different projects and learning tools which you can join uh, to find out more in june there is going to be a global green software summit all around the world with virtual and in-person events so your viewers your listeners can join that remotely over teams so green software foundation the summit and if you want to learn more about the principles of green software how to write green code what does green look like you can also go to principles.green um if you've got any questions find me on twitter as well under clj Chris, let, let, let me check with you now. Uh, are you making a lot of money as a green software engineer? Because my part of the world, people, <laughs> people also like to know, right? Uh, I definitely say there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a good career for anyone that's interested in it. It's a, a rapidly growing and in-demand skill. I don't know how many green software engineers you know. There are not enough. So I think anyone who takes this one has a bright future. Okay. All right. All right. Th thank you very much, uh, Chris, for your time on today's episode of the show. But uh, before we say bye bye now, I'm sure, you know, some people out there might want to get in touch with you. So wh where can these people find you? So you can find me on Twitter at CLJ. So it's the animal, the seal, the bird, the J. It's not, not the easiest. I'm on GitHub and I'm also linked to on the Green Software Foundation website at the top. Okay. Okay. So any last words before we say bye bye, Chris? Thank you for listening. Make an impact. Go save the world. <laughs> All right. So you've heard it from Chris today uh, on uh, today's episode of the Tech Talk. Thank you very much, uh, Chris, for your time. And thank you very much for listening in. So if uh, you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. So you can have a rewatch of this particular episode and the previous episode. Uh, on at uh, the YouTube channel. So it's the Tech Talk with Kazim on YouTube. So um, here is where myself and Chris is going to be saying bye-bye now. So it's a bye-bye from myself and Chris once again, and I will see you again another time. Bye-bye. Yeah.